Finally, 18 days after it was originally due to move, the time came for the first module to be towed. It's a big, it's a big thing for everybody. We'd like to get this moved. And uh, you know, this is why we're down here. This is what everybody is waiting for. So we get the two bulldozers at the back, and that is Bob and Phil. So make sure they sat on the ridges. Don't pull up, yep. don't push down, just push. It's probably uh, getting close to eight o'clock in the evening, PM. One heck of a lot of preparation gone into tonight's work. So sit in first gear, give her a bit of welly. She will just ease the throttles up while they're pushing and hopefully she'll roll out from where she is now. So very excited. You can, you can feel it here. Everyone is sort of uh, quite the expected. It's a bit like uh, waiting for a bird somehow. It's <laughs> that mixture of uh, excitement and slight angst. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah, nice crystal. Happy? Yeah. Done your toilet stop? Yeah. Do you need another one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest challenge for a move like this is always going to be the roadway. If we were pulling on tarmac with this sort of weight, 150 tonne on wheels, not a problem whatsoever. But we're pulling on uh, material which is uh, pretty uncertain. The roadway has to be hard enough to take the pressure of the ski, um, which I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, but this will be the proof in the pudding right now in the next half an hour. I don't get nervous. I'll get a little stressed every now and then, uh, but I don't get nervous. Let's get going. Right. OK, Ed, Chrissy J, just uh, put a little bit of torque on the system. OK, guys, you want to start pushing, please? Sweet, that's just what we wanted. OK, keep it going. OK, Ed, go up to uh, two, please. OK, guys, stop pushing the back. OK, swing around the corner there, Chrissy. Swing around the corner. Yeah, keep going left, left, left. That's great, isn't it? It's like it's safe. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. One down, seven to go. OK, Ed, we're going to go up to 2.5, please, bud, at 1,500 RPM. That's brilliant. Yeah? That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, the way it moves, it was so smooth. So smooth. Pretty awesome roadway here, gentlemen. She's hardly sinking. Dead-eyed dick now, Ed, because I'm following you. I can't see anything, so you want to be straight down the line. If you want to give any twitches in the skis on the module. I'm turning back, but she's skiing a little bit. Eddie, uh, down to two. Now. Yep. Still at 16. Still at 16. Good landing. How was it for you, Ben? Good. Okay. Pretty good all the way, really. You look very happy, Ben. I am happy. That was uh, a very successful tow, much, much better than I thought it was going to be. In early January, as the work to move Halley progressed, I joined glaciologist Jan on a trip to investigate a new crevasse which had recently been spotted in the ice shelf. First noticed just over two months ago, it was nicknamed the Halloween Crack 
after the inauspicious date of its discovery. So Jan, yeah. where are we going today? We are going to uh, Halloween Crack, which is a major uh, rift in the Brand Ice Shelf. Yeah. And um, only in October it's broken all the way through the surface, and now it's growing pretty big. It's uh, widening very rapidly. About 40 centimeters a day, it's getting wider. Uh, and um, we just want to go and have a look at it. Middle of October last year, we were going up the N9 flag line and we came across it then. It was only about this wide with nice straight sides. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise because obviously that's one of our main travel routes that we used to send heavy vehicles along. When you think it's only really three months um, since you could drive across it safely, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty huge now. I think you'd have to be quite optimistic to try and get a skidoo across. Today is the first time that anyone has been to see Halloween Crack face to face since it was discovered. But as we arrived, I had no idea how significant this trip would turn out to be. The area around the crevasse is potentially unstable, so for safety reasons, we had to work roped together. Get myself connected to a rope, and check her nose boys are connected nicely. We weren't allowed to go close to the edge of Halloween Crack. So the only way to get a proper look was to use a drone. As with Chasm 1, it's up to Jan to keep tabs on how this crevasse might affect the area surrounding Halley in the future. In order to do this, he wants to set up a time-lapse camera to monitor how the crack is growing. So we'll take a picture every hour for the next couple of months, and then if we play these in sequence, then hopefully we'll be able to see the widening of, of the crack and also the way it sort of propagates. But I hadn't expected it to form so rapidly, definitely not. And, and I hadn't expected it to widen so quickly and grow uh, at the rate it's, it's growing at the moment. So, no, it is, I think it is a, a surprise to a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, we do seem to be quite excited back at Cambridge. Um, it's, it's probably understandable, it's quite an expensive base. You know, obviously spent a lot of money moving it once. I imagine they don't want to have to spend that again. In total, the British Antarctic Survey HQ back in Cambridge will spend £11 million on the Halley Move project. We'll come back in a month or so and check it out. Looks a bit vulnerable from here. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be all right. 